All right, so you may recall we covered last week and also everybody's talking about this. There was a very brief NBA player mm -hmm. boycott yes. of the playoffs last week in reaction to the police shooting of Jacob Blake. So that lasted like one or two days, and everyone's wondering, okay, what went on there? So it turns out that behind the scenes, some of the top players, including LeBron James, had sought the counsel of Obama, we can go ahead and throw this tweet up here, who was basically like, nah, you should go back to playing and we'll figure it out from there. Now, look, the biggest power that these players have, and this is obviously in the middle of the playoffs, is to withhold their labor. That's the biggest power that any worker has, but especially when you are an NBA player and you have the nation's entire attention on you, if you actually want to demand real change, it was like, wow, this is a real thing that they're doing that will generate tons of media coverage, lots of focus and attention, will put a lot of pressure on the NBA. And so Obama swoops in as seems to be now his like MO and role to basically Mm. quash any potential of actually any sort of real change and make sure because if people get too out of line and their ten and their uh, people move too far to the left that makes him look bad that makes his legacy look bad so he has basically come in as the anti-change agent just as he did in the democratic primary yeah but at the same time what is the nba going to do for social justice in america is lebron james going to support a wealth tax no is lebron james going to support any like actual economic measures here no and look their solutions that these people want are to put like Black Lives Matter on their jerseys whenever they play and make millions of dollars. But don't they already continue. do that? Huh? Yeah, apparently. That's, <laughs> that's what their whole thing is. So look, I just think this whole thing, the, the so-called protest withholding stuff is empty because they these people are at their heart, complete hypocrites. They're the same ones who called out their own players for talking about Uyghur genocide in China. Mm -hmm. They pay zero price. LeBron James and James Harding and all these other people who spoke out against Daryl Morey pay zero price for speaking up for Black Lives Matter. And whenever it would really cost them, they don't. They not just don't say anything. They speak out against it. But that's, so well, these and that's people why, are hypocrites of the highest which, order. That, and which is why when they were actually willing to do the boycott, it was like, oh, okay. And well, what are going to get from the, a boycott? Well, I mean, like but nothing. you can. You ha these are people with a lot of cultural power. And yeah, so you can focus a lot of attention. And they use it for neoliberalism, which is what they are. But that's the thing, yeah. is if you actually, and that is a totally legitimate yeah. critique, because if you actually wanted to talk about police violence and not just on the like, we're going to put BLM on the court. You have to talk about ending the war on drugs. You have to talk about real policy changes, not just the symbolic type. But so what have they, now that they're back to work after their one day protest movement, um, the NBA has put out a joint statement and what they have promised is they're going to establish a social justice coalition. Well, they're doing that already. Social yeah. justice coalition. Um, in every city where the league franchise owns and controls the arena property, team governors are going to continue to work with local election officials to mm. convert it into a voting location. And the league is going to work with players and our network partners to create and include advertising spots in each playoff game dedicated to civic engagement. Yeah. So it's like racism has been ended. Thank you, NBA <laughs> players and Barack Obama. Yeah, I mean, sure. Look, the real thing is NBA's got historically low ratings. And the reason why is because of stuff like this. Same with the NFL and more. So, uh, I mean, a lot of people don't want to hear this, but most Americans don't want all this nonsense going on in their sports lives. They can protest and withhold all they want. If they want to, rat I mean, what they're basically saying is if you don't agree with what we're saying, then don't watch. And a lot of people are making that choice. Sure, and that's their right. But athletes have been at the forefront of social change throughout American history. I mean, they have a leadership role. We may wish that there were other cultural figures that had as much power and sway as they do. But actually, these are people who, if they did have a real agenda and program, they were willing to boycott to fight for that, it could create change. Now, you're right that from the beginning, yeah. right, what was this really about? What were they really calling for? Sort of amorphous, sort of more symbolic than any sort of structural change. But as if, you know, if there was any hope that there could be real progress or change taken from this, what was a fairly dramatic action, stopping the playoffs in, right in the middle, right, and saying we're not going to move forward with this, Barack Obama comes in to make sure that things go back to usual so he can enjoy his NBA sure. playoffs and yeah. not have any ripple in his social schedule. On that, I agree. <laughs> All, right. All right. More Rising for you after this.